thank you for joining me on Ladies in Tech. This is a go-to place if you're wanting to learn about RS Logics 500. Make sure you subscribe so you can follow right along as we go day by day through our lessons. So in today's video, it's going to be a series of videos. So we're going to have three videos. In this video today, we're going to talk about the process we want to control, and we're going to develop a sequential function chart in order to show the flow of what the process is going to do. And from there, we're going to go into video number two. Video number two, we're going to be putting into RS Logics 500 and Ladder Logic. And then in video three, I'm going to show you a different technique called Step Seal in RS Logics 500 using Ladder Logic as well. So let's get programming and have some fun. This is a program that we want to control. A main cutting motor for a cutting application is controlled by a momentary start and stop push buttons. A coolant pump is also controlled by the same button. When the start button is pressed, the coolant pump starts immediately and the cutting motor starts two seconds later. When the stop push button is pressed, the main motor stops immediately and the coolant pump will remain on for another three seconds. If the stop is pressed before the main motor has started, the coolant should turn off immediately if the coolant is on. I've created this little cartoon to show you how it's going to work. Operator presses the start button, the coolant begins flowing. Two seconds later, the motor starts. And we're going to sit at this until we get our next transition. What's the next transition? The transition is going to be for the operator to press the stop push button. So here, we'll wait for the operator to press the stop bu push button. And there you go, he presses stop, the motor stops right away, the coolant has the delay, it's still flowing, and then three seconds later it shuts off. Now let's do it the other way. If the operator presses the start button, the coolant starts, but the motor has not started, and the operator now presses a stop button before the motor, the coolant shuts off right away. So okay, now we're going to develop a sequential function chart for this cutting and coolant control application. I've created a function chart here. Whenever we see a box, this is a step, and at steps, output happens. So we have step 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you can see I got these little crosshairs as well. Those are called transitions. So that is what needs to happen before the process can go on to the next step. So let's start creating this program into a sequential function chart, and you'll see what I mean as we go. So we know right off the bat, we have a main cutting motor from a cutting application that is controlled by a momentary start and stop push button buttons. So we have two inputs. We have a push button for a start and a push button for a stop. We have two outputs. We have a cutting motor and we also have a pump that pumps coolant. So we have two inputs and two outputs. So every time we uh, address those inputs and outputs, always make sure to put their actual output and input addresses beside it. So we know we have a coolant pump and a motor. And before we even start anything, both of them are off. So that's the first thing I'm going to do on step zero is going to make sure that both those outputs are off. Here I added to the step, I say coolant pump equals zero. When it equals zero, it's a low, so the coolant pump will be off. And you can also see here, I put in the address for the coolant pump, O colon zero slash eight. So that is the physical location that output is wired to on our PLC in order to turn on or off that coolant pump. Also I have the cutting motor equals zero. So I am making sure that that cutting motor is off and its output address is O colon zero slash nine. Now in order for anything else to happen in this program we have to have some type of transition to get us there. And if we go back to our control process, it says when the start button is pressed, the coolant pump starts immediately and the cutting motor starts two seconds after. So we have a transition. In order to get to a step where we're going to turn on that coolant pump, we have to wait for the start button. So let's add that start button in now. Now you can see I added the transition for the start button to be true. Start PB, so start push button, located at I colon zero slash one, needs to be true in order to go to step one. So once that's true, we can now put our outputs that are going to happen at step one. At step one, when the start button is true, the coolant pump is going to be set to one, so high, we're turning that on, and it, again, it's located at O colon zero slash eight, 
And also at this time, we're going to start a two second delay timer. Now we have to look for our next transition. What is our next transition going to be? We have to wait for our timer to be done before we can start the cutting motor. They've added in here the two second delay slash done. So that's when the two second delay to start that motor after the coolant pump has been started. Once it is true, we can move on to step two. And in step two, we're going to have the cutting motor come on and also still have the coolant pump that is still on. So in step two, we set the coolant pump to one, which is on, and it's located still at O colon zero slash eight. And we also turn on the cutting motor to equal one, and it's located at O colon zero slash nine. So this step two will continue to be true until the next transition. And what's our next transition? The transition is if the operator presses the stop button, we're gonna shut off the cutting motor immediately and begin a delay timer of three seconds to shut off the coolant pump. And there we added in our not stop PV. The reason why I put not stop PV, because the stop push button is wired normally closed. So we're looking for a low signal from the stop button before we head on to step three. So when the stop button is pressed, it gives a low signal. So our transition will move us on to step three when it is pressed. At step three, we're gonna keep the uh, coolant pump. We're gonna keep it on at O colon zero slash eight, and we're gonna shut off the cutting motor to equal zero at O colon zero slash nine. And at this time, we're gonna start a three second delay timer. When the three second delay timer has completed its timing, so when it's done, we're gonna go right back to step zero, which sets our coolant pump to zero, it's no longer on. So one more thing we have to consider, we also have this little statement here, if stop is pressed before the main motor has started, the coolant turns off immediately. So let's add that in now. So to add that in, we need to have an or situation. We have two possible paths we can take. We can continue from one to two, or here we have an alternative route that takes us straight back to zero. So once we get to step one where we have the coolant pump on, but not the motor yet, there's a possibility the operator could press stop and head right back up the step that shuts off the coolant pump. Or we just simply wait for the two second delay and we do our no more process. So that's it, we've created now our sequential function chart, which is a good map so that we know how to follow what we need to write for our program. So now let's get over to RSLogix 500 and put this into Ladder Logic. Make sure to follow along with us and watch the next video. We're going to be putting it into Ladder Logic. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out when it's ready.